The faculty, staff, and management of EDO wish to make it clear that the following song involves the killing and consumption of a male human being by a female alien, and that any social, ethical, legal, moral, medical, or sexual conclusions which the audience may draw from this do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the faculty, staff, and management of EDO. We wish to point out that the song could just as easily be about a male alien devouring a female human, a male alien consuming a male human, or even a female female alien devouring a female human being, if that's the kind of thing that you're into. Thank you. Can we start the fucking song now? Okay, we're going to do this now, we're going to do it later. I'm going to say the name of the band is E-D-O. We're getting to it, don't worry about that. He knows our song. Okay, the name of the band is... E-D-O. The name of the band is... Class, so you hear that. Hey, the band is. Oh. Hey, that guy up at the window is just shouting. Someone kill him. Take it away, boy. Four people up on the scene. Some people find the visual element appealing. Some people find the musical element appealing. Some people can't stand the sound of my voice. I don't blame them. Um, so, you know, they can watch the show or listen to the band or whatever it is. It's a to we want total immersion experience. We want, to inv we want to be able to draw the audience in. There's a lot of things we do to, to blur the line between crowd and audience. And hopefully by the end of the show, a really successful show is one after which most of the people there won't know if they saw a show or were in the show. And that's success. The other idea which we come back to again in, in EDO is undiscovered heroes. People that are generally not known but have some spectacular fact about them. Boris Karloff is one. A um, guy named Cabeza de Vaca, a Spanish explorer, was one. It's some cool stuff. Phineas Gage is another. I'm not sure he's a hero, but people, people who in some way their lives are instructive and something can be learned, something can and should be learned from them. But we feel like it's, we should bring them to the attention of those who, uh, of everybody. Toaster idea came from the idea of writing a song called Toaster. My toaster caught fire one day, uh, and I was really mad because it, it started burning. I took it out outside, and it kept burning for a while. And I looked at it, but I realized all of a sudden, wow, here's this toaster, which I'm not going to plug in. We could smash it up. We can write a song called Toaster, and we can smash it up. So we did, um, and it was basically a one-shot song until we played in New York at the Spiral. And on the way to the gig, I passed a garbage can with a toaster with that was looked like it had caught fire sitting on top of the garbage can. I picked it up and said, we got to play toaster tonight. And it's sort of part of the repertoire now when we find a toaster um, or, some, or another object. That was a couple of toasters back. Um, it's like the cow brains. That was pig brains. Those were pig brains. That didn't quite work out. That didn't that worked out very badly. But that was about another idea. Let's sing it. Let's do a song called the brain song. And at the climax of the song, I will hold up a brain. And then I'll throw it down into a wok and cook the brains and give everybody some brains. But see, well, we didn't work like that. We didn't realize, is, you know, <laughs> big brains are, I don't know if they're runny or they're just really small, but I picked up a handful and they no, I think that all down my arms. Like some <laughs> horrible, scram bloody <laughs> scrambled eggs. That was gross. gross. It didn't look like a brain. But our bass player ate the brains. It smelled bad. It smelled really horrible. It smelled really bad. Yeah. Smelled really bad. Man, terrible. We lost some vegetarian fans. Yeah, they were yeah. furious. How did the, uh, the, the sort of uh, the stage antics build to this theatrical point that, they, that, that they've gotten to in that's recent a, years? That's the thing. In the old days, when I first joined uh, EDO, Elliot always had these, like, you know, he would have at least two or maybe four uh, paper garbage bags filled with, uh, with um, just 
stage props. Like there was a mannequin head, there was like a puppet, you know, a helmet. He always had all these things. And uh, over time, he ended up getting other people to build stuff so that he would have, instead of, you know, a puppet, he would have a giant squid, for right. example. And uh, we had an artist, Ann Cook, that was uh, doing some amazing stuff for us. And she did all those crazy masks that we used to have. Nothing happened in, in, in Philadelphia before the year came along. Nothing happened. When they came along, everything changed. That's the whole point. I don't know why I was alone on New Year's Eve in 1993. I'm trying to remember why. But for some reason, I ended up at the 40th Street Underground to see video. And the place was just alive. Yanni was the bass player at the time. He had this incredible groove. He was clean cut at the time and had a fake nose on and, and a, a dress. And I had just got moved into town. I didn't know anybody. And I was trying to make friends. And I was like, oh, I want to be friends with these people. Because there was like this whole scene going on, this whole weirdness and fun that was EDO. It was smart, but it was rocking and it was groove. And, and there were like, these, these pretty girls in like hippie dresses and long hair and they were just writhing all over the floor in this filth like just spreading their hands out into the mud I was like, whoa, I gotta be a part of this this is really weird <laughs> but there were all these people that surrounded like, like Bob Hemp who, who did the lights and he was always just like this insane hippie girl with these glasses and I looked like a, a Robert Crumb character and the problem with the American music scene is that a band cannot succeed unless it has a pigeonhole in which to fit into. And this is something that's been a huge problem. They want to say, you know, what, well, what do you sound like? It's like, well, we sound a little like this, but we really don't. They're like, well, are you like alternative? And we're like, well, we're alternative to opera. We're not like opera at all. Are you jazz? We're not jazz, but we smell funny. And they ask like... Um, <laughs> You know, so this routine, you know, the, like, well, we're sort of like Zappa meets Funkadelic. Wow, well, we wouldn't be interested in booking that. That's too weird. Once you see EDO, there's, there's no turning back, so the rest is history. What, do you what I do with EDO, uh, I have it on my resume, and I'm hoping to branch out and become staff cartoonist for other rock and roll bands, but so far, there hasn't been one that seems to appreciate the value of having uh, rock and roll cartooning going on on stage as much as EDO does and uh, perhaps there never will be but if I go to my grave only doing staff cartooning for one band I will feel that I have lived a full and rich life if that band is EDO I'm sorry they should go see EDO rather than not uh, because the people who don't go see EDO uh, are going to live their entire lives wondering what is up with these other people that have gone to see EDO. Most people who have gone to see EDO will, frankly, feel a little bit uh, superior and condescending to those who haven't. And if this trend continues, there will be two types of people in the world, those who have seen EDO and those who haven't. The people who are being condescended to will begin to resent to condescension and will take up arms and there will be a huge conflagra conflagration and uh, probably much of humanity will be wiped out. So I would say since some people have already seen EDO, there's no way to go back to a state where nobody's seen EDO. So we may as well go forward to a state where everyone has seen EDO and frankly I think that that will lead to a much happier level of humanity across uh, the board. <laughs> they wanted to forget about the man who came among them and said, I will teach you to believe. I'll teach you to believe. I'll teach you to believe. Try not to suck this time. Uh.